Greetings friends. I was asked to do a video on um, my take on Crapo's town hall meetings. Uh, like I had mentioned in the previous video, I had um, I had stopped and seen him in two different areas. I do want to take the time to be able to commend him. He did get a 90% on the Freedom Index, uh, which is pretty good considering the rest of what we're dealing with with Congress. Uh, I have, so I'm just going to kind of run down a few things, uh, some of the things of some of the basic concerns that people had. Uh, there were some, he had brought on and said the two, you know, the two greatest problems that we were having in this country were the national debt and the exponential growth of government. And he went over some facts and figures in a very, very short PowerPoint because I appreciate his willingness to be able to take comments and criticisms and suggestions from people, uh, which was a really great thing. Um, he does the one issue that I had though from uh, well I probably should tell you what some of the issues are uh, some of the concerns were uh, related to the refugee issue that's going on in Twin Falls and around the country uh, specifically some issues on Obamacare there was definitely some concern about asset forfeiture and the uh, and the rise of the police state uh, there was some concern about the VA and gun seizures which is going on in northern Idaho and then uh, a few things related to um, higher education and uh, there was also some mention about the Iran nuclear deal. In a different meeting, um, which was much more interesting, um, actually, it, it, they, the, uh, they were, uh, there was some mention about rulemaking and about the, the fact that the administrative policy now has been um, created and forcing the people to submit to administrative policy uh, that has actually been created outside of the legislature. There was a, there were there were some people there that were uh, obviously not of our ilk uh, that were talking about wanting more federal control through the Bureau of Reclamation and trying to keep our lakes pristine. Um, there was other. There was also some more. Uh, there were some questions about. There was a young individual there that was talking about um, asking him about how to. Um, regain our fiscal and moral responsibility in our country and so I wanted to be able to take a few moments to be able to talk about some of these and some of the questions that I had come up with while I was sitting there listening to what he was saying and although that most of the things that he was saying on um, I totally agreed with uh, I did still have quite a few questions and one of them um, is um, is his support for um, the military he believes in uh, the fact that we need to increase the budget for the military industrial complex even though he didn't say that he said the military and my question as I have stated before is if we adhered to the consti our constitutional limitations as in accordance with uh, the common defense in our Constitution uh, would we not be able to increase our military budget by adhering to the limitations according to the Constitution and is not occupying 193 countries and and working underneath the United Nations spending tax dollars to be able to go into these other countries forcing democracy or what I call political syphilis on the rest of the world wouldn't we be better off and wouldn't we be seen in a better light through other countries and so isn't actually our ability to be able to occupy 193 countries um, actually prohibiting our ability to increase our national defense and I believe that it is. Related to the, um, re the refugee issue, uh, people were very, very concerned about that. Um, my question happens to be, um, how does the Walter McCarran Act of 1946, creating the rules for naturalization, come into play? Um, can they just suspend the assimilation process uh, in the name of refugees because we need to save people? The other question I had is, you know, Obama all obviously wants to be able to destroy this nation. He believes that it, it, it is an Anglo-Saxon nation. He believes that it's predominantly white. He is a reparationist, and he does want to be able to create a multicultural cesspool where nobody believes the same, and so that we can create some kind of a democracy that will lead to a, so, a de democratic rebellion, that will lead to a socialist de uh, rebellion as well. So I believe that Obama is actually behind that. And so my question then is, isn't, is, isn't it the goal of redistribution of wealth in the fact that Obama had said no nation would ever, he does not believe that one nation ever, should ever be above another nation, which completely voids um, America's traditional um, 
American exceptionalism ideal. And then the other one is how is it lawful when the whole thing is driven by federal funding. Now these colleges were figuring out how much power they actually have and they actually operate outside of the legislature uh, dealing directly with the federal government which would seem to me to be able to um, to violate one of the checks and balances and their separations of power between the federal government and the state legislature and local colleges. Obamacare, there was a mention that the cost had increased and, and the GOP can't seem to get rid of it. My question is, is I don't think the GOP really desires to, even though uh, Crapo thinks that they do, only because I don't see much difference between the Democrat and Republican Party anyway. Um, when, you know, when they come out and sit, then they made, the Republicans made fun of uh, you know, the question that uh, uh, Chris Matthews had stated before about the difference between a socialist and a Democrat, I'd like to be able to follow that up with uh, what makes Republicans think they're not socialists, or what's the difference between a Republican and a socialist? I think only to a degree. So the question then is, can't the states actually nullify Obamacare like we did with the RFID? Now, may, there are Many of you guys that don't remember that, but the states actually, there were uh, quite a few states that actually um, just pretended that the RFID, RFID just wasn't going to happen, and it didn't. And that, in essence, is the pure definition of nullification. There was some mention about the EPA. Obviously, we know they're an unconstitutional entity. According to Crapo, EPA probably could not be abolished. I disagree. I think it can be completely abolished, and it would be something that the states could actually do because it's not in the purview of the federal government's jurisdiction. So how is it that the <clears throat> why and how and can state law enforcement get this training without the legislature? So this one is pertaining to the a asset forfeiture. He actually believes that it's actually okay to be able to, in some instances, in the war on terror, which is a federally created program through, I believe, the Hegelian dialectic, uh, is to be able to say that sometimes it's okay to be able to step outside of the Constitution and allow government to be able to take on to the powers that it shouldn't take on. There is never a time that it's okay, a war on anything, to be able to take away uh, someone's God-given right to be able to protect their private property. I don't care what they're guilty of until they've been guilty of that crime. Uh, gun seizures about the VA and all that, you guys obviously know, you know, give our ability to be able to give the government the authority to be able to define what mental illness is. We obviously see where this is going when they have declared Essentially, they've declared constitutional American-minded people that love this country in a peaceful manner and with the principles of self-government now are somehow terrorists. Well, to them, terrorist is a, is a, uh, is a mindset, and it's something that is a, to carries a degree of mental illness, which is one way in which they plan on disarming us. Uh, they actually, uh, regarding the higher education and Obama's rewriting of Title IX, which is a power that is not authorized by the president, and uh, and the Iran nuclear deal. Now, the average American believes that we that America should disarm Iran, and I would like to be able to get into a debate with that. Um, of course, I'm up against the end on the on this particular time on the video, but I'm not so sure that that should happen. And I'd like to be able to open up that dialogue and to be able to have my fellow patriots discuss that. If we truly believe in a constitution, well, we have to decide whether we actually believe in our constitution or not. First of all, if constitutions were written to be able to give our federal government few and defined powers, then we should hold them to that under any circumstance. If we, have the, if, if we desire to be able to expand that power of the federal government, we have a way to do that. And until we do that, they should remain, uh, those powers should remain limited. I don't see in the common defense that Iran has even attacked the American people, therefore, I don't find any justification for trying to prevent them from having any nuclear bombs any more than I would expect that China would be able to prevent America from having um, nuclear capabilities as well. So anyway, uh, those are some of the issues that I had related to uh, to Crapo's speech. Of course, we had a little bit more. I'm not sure how much you want to see of me today, but uh, I just thought I would give you my thoughts on uh, my visit with Crapo. Uh, great conversation, um, good man, and uh, we just need to keep communication with him. God bless you guys. Like I said before, have a great Friday. Talk to you later. Bye.